central New Mexico. October 19th, 2019. Investigative journalist Linda Moulton Howe has invited ancient astronaut theorist Giorgio Tsoukalos to join her on a trip to a spot in the desert just outside Roswell, very near what is known as the Skip Site. According to eyewitnesses, one of the three UFOs seen in the sky in July 1947 first crashed to Earth near this location, then was propelled back into the air, skipping like a stone in a pond before finally coming to rest. Linda was contacted by geologist Frank Kimbler, who wants to show her mysterious metal fragments that he found here and search the area for more. Linda, this is so exciting. I have not been here in a couple of years, so I'm really looking forward to meeting Frank. Yeah, well, I'm glad that we've got a geologist who's helping because the geologist looks at land and says, if there is debris, there's going to be some kind of a drift with the land. And just from what I know, he has studied some areas meticulously. Right. Giorgio and Linda arrive at the skip site and meet Frank Kimbler, a local geologist and professor of earth science. How are you? Nice to meet you. Good to see you? you. All right. Frank, Linda, is, finally. Yes. You and I have been chasing these artifacts. Chasing the metals. For looking for so the, many looking years. for parts. Yes. Many years. <laughs> <laughs> professor Kimbler has spent nearly a decade searching areas beneath the purported trajectory of the Roswell craft with infrared technology and metal detectors. When an object crashes, they're gonna scatter a variety of materials around. Knobs, control devices, plastic, wires, whatever. If it's coming apart, it's gonna leave those pieces behind. And those are the kinds of pieces that I want to find and have found some of. Since 2011, Professor Kimbler has uncovered more than a dozen metal fragments that he is subjected to scientific testing and found to be highly unique. That's what we want to go out there and see where yeah, you've been getting wait. this. Frank, yeah. what's inside the case? Oh, this, this is the magic right here. This is some of the material that I have found out here uh, using a metal detector. Um, interesting. This stuff is, is, is very interesting. It's all twisted and mangled up. Something that you would expect to happen yeah. from a, uh, a, a crash is to have metal that's, that's compact and twisted. When Professor Kimbler laid out his box of his pieces of metal, the first thing that struck me is these were tiny, tiny, tiny fragments. Could they possibly be from wreckage? These pieces are small, uh, which is things that the government would have missed. Uh, and, they wouldn't have been able yeah, to find it. Yeah, and here's my magic. Let's get a comparison here. Oh, look this, at that. Look at that. Look at it's oh, like a snow field. After all these years, the, all of the pieces, they look absolutely pristine. That's the magnesium zinc side. This has got layers to it. That's amazing. It's. But I bet you've never seen anything like no. this. No. Being an earth scientist, being a geologist, I've seen lots of all kinds of materials that are out there. I have never, ever seen anything like this. This fragment that Linda is showing me, it, that stuff is absolutely amazing. Well, I've never seen anything like it before in my life. And what's interesting about it is that it has some layers, some banding on it. And that banding is very similar to some of the banding that I found in photomicrographs of the material that I have from out here. I think as that Giorgio is, is holding this, he's holding something made by another intelligence from someplace we don't understand. And this is truly extraterrestrial. Is it possible? that Giorgio is holding an actual fragment of an extraterrestrial craft? And if so, could even more incredible artifacts still remain in the desert outside Roswell? We need to get going and we need to get out there so you guys can experience finding some of this stuff, which is All amazing. Right, let's go explore. So where do you think's best here now? We're in the perfect spot and we're gonna cover this whole thing right here. Uncovering bits of debris in this vast desert is a daunting task. But after nearly a decade spent combing the entire area, 
Professor Kimbler has pinpointed certain hotspots. Some of the artifacts he brought with him today were discovered in this very location just within the past month. So just above the area of the ground, we're gonna sweep back and forth like this. And we're gonna cover this side to side, back and forth, little by little. I've been out here six or seven or eight hours at a whack swinging this thing till my arms break off. We can uh, cut across this way. You're waiting for that beep. We're looking off in, in this general direction out here. The craft basically either had some kind of mechanical failure or something blew up. Professor Kembler scans the area along the gouge, meticulously covering every inch. After nearly two hours, he has not detected any metal objects. Giorgio, my arm is about to break off, and I'm kind of hoping that you just might have a little bit better luck than sure. me doing Let's this. See. You saw what I was doing. It's yep. already fired up. And okay. I'm going to let you swing this, and we Let's can just walk. Working. There right. you go. It's perfect. working perfect. Excellent. Maybe you'll be able to, to get the magic flowing mm -hmm. on this. Well, I think we need to head up right over here, because this is right at the base of a hill, and there's a bunch of disturbed rocks. Might be a good place to, uh, to capture okay. material that has run off. Also, oh. Within just a few minutes of taking over the metal detecting, Giorgio gets a hit. I heard something. Yeah. There is something. Oh, my God. There is something there, and we need to dig it up. Let me help you find it. OK. It's right here somewhere. We'll it's find right. it. We will find it. You're on top of it. You're right there. Right there. See if it's there. It's in my hand. Wow. Now comes the hard part. It's a, a piece oh, of wire. All right, OK. A tiny little, little piece wire. of wire. We're going to keep it. We're, we're going to take it and have it analyzed, because maybe it's got something in it that's weird. Let's still investigate this. We need to take it and have, and have it tested. Giorgio hands off the metal detector to Linda, who continues along the gouge. Just a few feet from where Giorgio detected a piece of wire, oh. they get another hit. All right. Pick up your uh, your bracelet right. too. I tell you what. Let's um, dump dump it into this hand, right here. There we go. It's another piece of wire. This is strange looking though. Why is it so twisted and mangled? I have no idea. You said that if there was debris, this would be one of the places because of the geographic uh, terrain it's, right it's here. It's run off, and this is what I've used time and time again to find stuff. As far as Giorgio and Linda are concerned, any metal objects found in the so-called gouge area are worth examining. Is it possible that these bits of wire represent debris from the 1947 crash that was overlooked by the military?